Hear he, hear me. Hi, my beautiful seekers. This is Morgane, the existential shift. I like fluffy animals and apparently to match my outfit to my couch. I, I don't know what you, why you guys are listening to me. Like, seriously? Look, this is what I'm hiding. Yeah. But since you're already here, why don't we talk? To start with, you saw the headline for this video, and I bet I already have like comments of like, you man-hater, I love men. This is going to be said with the utmost love and respect. And also, and you know, that's just to be fair, truth be told, it's not something that only men do. Women do that too. It's just something I mostly notice when it comes to males. Now, here's the irony of it. This is not referring to douches and jackasses. This is actually referring to intelligent, awesomies, successfulies, dudes that have amazing potential and they actually mean well. And they think they have it figured out so that's why they're so very confused when things don't work out the way they think they should work out in accordance to the ultimate truth that they figured out. Hey, yeah. Okay, first of all, well actually second of all, happy equinox, happy full moon in Libra. This is very fitting that the equinox, which is the first day of spring and the day that symbolizes equality, equality between the light and the dark, okay, fair amount of light, fair amount of dark in that day, um, comes up in the full moon in Libra, which is the illumination of the essence of Libra, which is balance, equality, equilibrium, and the essence of justice, the scales, balancing the scales. The yin and the yang and the harmony between them when they are working together and not against each other. It's amazing how the pagan calendar always seems to make sense and sync with everything as opposed to the Gregorian calendar that seems to not ever make sense with anything and not synchronize or sync with anything. Maybe it's because the moon count the pagan calendar is moon associated and it follows the cycles of the moon and of the earth and of nature. And maybe if nature makes sense, then that calendar that follows nature would make sense. What do you think? Anyway, yeah, three minutes in. It was important. So how men beautiful, lovely men, sabotage their love life and potentially what could be great relationships. <clears throat> and instead, bring in not good relationships. How do I explain this? It's a very simple idea, but it's a little bit complicated to explain. Okay, so imagine you are a guy that is, I don't know, successful, ambitious, independent, yeah, catch. And you're well-rounded, and you're kind, and you're smart, and you, 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 got, you got the checklist. Okay, okay, great. And you think to yourself, well, if I'm this guy, then I want the same type of girl, right? Because if I'm at this level, I don't want someone in this level. I want some, someone on this level. I want someone who's also independent and a free thinker that, you know, um, has her own world and her own life and pays for her own bills. I want that. I deserve that. And you do. You do. But then you're like, wait, I'm the guy. So, <laughs> dramatic effect. <laughs> I want things to be my way, right? 
if I'm the masculine energy and I'm this and this strong, smart, successful, yada yada, I want to be the masculine archetype. I want to partner a woman who aligns with that and that aligns herself with my world. Now, what's the problem there? Let me explain. If you want a woman that has her own world, that has a strong core and a sense of self that lives her life and pays her own bills, she will have her own world, right? So if she's this big, beautiful thing of an entity, by nature, she can't completely comply and align with your way, your time, your place, your everything. A woman that can do that completely aligned with, you know, just putting herself within the structure of the world that you've created for yourself, is by nature, she will have to be a woman that doesn't have her own world, that it's easy for her to completely comply and become a part of what is your world. So it's an oxymoron. You want someone that will flow with you and your needs and the world slash empire that you have established for yourself. But you also want her to be independent on her own and have her own said empire. That can't happen. Now, I'm not saying that one needs to give up their world in order to fit into the other person's world. No, not the man or the woman needs to do so. What both parties need to do is compromise, go towards each other, and meet each other in the middle. There is your world, there is her world, it's cycles, and then where the cycles meet, that little piece, that's the third world that is shared between the two of you. But if for someone to be completely immersed into someone else's world and bubble, they need to have basically what nature requires, emptiness. The only thing that has entire room for you, as you are, is emptiness. But you want something that is full and, and amazing on its own, right? So what happens if you insist on it? If you try to control the narrative and the situation in a way that the other person the girl in this case, aligns with your world, your life, your schedule, etc. What happens is, if she is that person that you're looking for, she'll say no. Uh-uh, no motherfucker. Meet me halfway. Look at me eye level. Respect me, not by words, but with actions. Show me that you respect my world by getting to know my world and meet me somewhere in the middle as opposed to a woman that will satisfy that will of yours, which will end up being like, um, hey, <laughs> you know how we're always going to, you know, the things that you want to go to and do the things the way you want to do them, when you want to do them, and how I'm always submissive to your will. You know how comfortable that is? So, um, pay my bills. Because she doesn't have her own world, right? That pays her own bills. We can't have the cake and eat it and eat it too. Please understand that. And women, if you do that, then take that to heart as well. Okay. If not to learn that lesson today, or to think about it, or meditate about it today, then when? 
full moon in Libra, the equinox. Happy spring. Happy spring. Speaking of, this is actually the new year. This is the real new year by nature, by paganism, spring, right? The initiation of the seasons. The sun went into Aries today, the first zodiac. I did um, 2019 Ministress of Magic, which is an extended reading for the entire year, and I did 12 of those for all the zodiac. And yes, it's been three months already, but it's been the three months that were like the twilight zone between 2018 and 2019, the transition phase. I, I see, I generally see January, February, and March of this year as a continuous of 2018. Like, we feel it with the energies, right, and all the transitions and everything that is happening. I believe, um, and I think, you know, others might agree with me who feel the energies, that this is when we are actually starting 2019. So this is a great time to kind of um, get the messages, you know, for this year, for 2019. I did uh, reduce the price because it's three months less, but hey, you still have nine months left to have you, you know, to read, to be read for you guys. So if you want to check that out, um, I will link it below in the information box. Since we're already doing the uh, promotional, this is what I have to offer kind of thing. Hey, I don't play games. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disrespect your intelligence, you know? It's just what it is. So alongside that, there is also Tarot Masterclass, which I just added um, almost 20 new classes because I had all the minor arcanas and now I finished the royal family, the court cards. So basically all the minor arcana and all the court cards, each of them has a video um, on its own. So check that link below. It's called Tarot Masterclass. You can either go through the process chronologically and learn tarot from the foundations and move forward and really have it sit and become a tarochi in this journey um, with me where I teach you to, how to do that. Um, or you can just be like, Morgan, I don't, I don't want to be a tarochi. I just, you know, I, I just, I, I had the spread. I want to know just these cards. So you can pick and choose whichever cards you want to know about. That's also perfectly fine. Thing is, if you're doing it now, from here until I finish the project, meaning until I upload the remaining cards, which are the major arcanas, which I'm so excited to start doing. Um, by the time I finish uploading all the classes, you get to enjoy the early bird prices. Okay, so prices will go up once I finish the entire uh, project and all the cards and all the lessons will be uploaded. So check that out if you want. And oh, if you want to book a private reading with me and you know, whine about that guy who wants you to be powerful but also submissive, and you're like, well, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, <laughs> Book a private reading with me. Hey, if you're a guy and a woman is doing that to you. Hey, if you have completely different issues that you want to talk to about with me, link below. You have like 30 minutes, you have an hour, you have a video, ch video chat option, you have a mentorship option, you have tons of options. So feel free to check that out as well. Why am I forgetting? Oh, yeah, very important. So I'm starting to do the general readings for April really soon like in the next couple of days. Um, I'll start uploading them in the next week, uh, couple of weeks. Um, so we will have the April readings and I will do extended for April. But here's the thing, right now, as we speak, we're in the midst of the energies of March, like the full moon energies. So until the end of March, until March 31st, and I, I believe time is lucid, especially um, and elusive, especially when it comes to energy readings. So, look, if you resonate with it, you resonate with it no matter when it is. But right now we're in the midst of the energies, at the peak of the energies of March. This is a time to go back to your general readings for March and connect the dots. And if you haven't checked out and you want to check it out, I also have the extended readings for March that I already done last month. This is when you're watching it and you're like really like, oh my God, yes, because you're feeling it as you're living it, as opposed to just hearing what will be two, three weeks from now. And you're like, yeah, I believe I can resonate with it, but not completely. Let's see how it turns out. Now you can actually check how everything turned out. Okay. So I 
truly recommend going back to this month's readings, uh, past month's readings. If you want to know what happened six months ago and make the connections, go for it. Mm. I don't have names for them. Comment your thoughts, how I should name them. Anyway, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. I mean, unless you want to do that, but you don't have to do that. Unless you want to do that, but you don't have to do that. Okay, let's ask for a message from my collective of seekers. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, the emperor. He's like, are you talking about me and you think I'm not going to pay a visit? Hmm. The emperor, it's the archetype of the divine masculine. Okay, he is the he is Zeus. He is the counterpart for Demeter, the empress. He's the god of the heavens, of the sky. And he is the archetype of masculinity. And considering we just spoke of him, <laughs> it's so amazing how they operate. I think the reason he's out is to be like, hey, I'm doing my best. But I also am going gonna, gonna to take advantage of this opportunity and tell what else this card says when it comes to men. So this is the ultimate male. Okay, great. Open to discussion, of course, but in accordance to the archetype. Okay. And this guy is a great worker. And he is very serious. And he means very well. He's a leader by example. But he is for matter, reality, survival, work, finances, practicality. As good as, as he is in these things, his challenge is to express himself emotionally. He's not very good at that. Let's just say. It. Let's just say. It. But that doesn't mean his his heart is not in the right place. So th this just helps me, you know, to um, clarify and strengthen my point that this is not to shade men. The opposite, quite the opposite. This is. For those of you out there who really tries to do their best, to be their best, and to find someone to match that. But just as you expect someone to match your frequency and your levels, you need to understand that just the same way, you need to match and resonate on her levels. She also has her standards. She also has her needs. Her world, the things that matter to her. And compromising and meeting each other in the middle, that doesn't mean breaking down the boundaries of your independence. A stiff tree log breaks, but a bamboo, even better, water being fluid, that's the most powerful substance on earth, water. You can't merge into someone else without merging or by expecting only them to flow to you. Then that way you'll only receive something, um, things that are passive, codependent, or more so just dependent. If you want someone to equally hold you when you're bent, Expect her to be strong on all aspects of life. Okay, it's not that you're pick and choose. Oh, I want you to be, to be strong in, in this situation, but I want you to be more weak and, and subordinate in this situation. And it's not how it works. But let's see if we want to have another message to kind of balance it up. Anything else? for the full moon in Libra and for the equinox for my collective of seekers who are watching me. Two of pentacles, two of swords. 
classic. We just spoke of Two of Swords is Moon and Libra. Two of Swords is Moon and Libra. This is a full Moon and Libra. It's fantastic. And there's a duality. Two is a dual number, and we have double two. The duality of the equinox and the duality of the moon. And two plus two equals four, and the emperor is four. I feel like the message is that at this time, we're going through a real, um, I was about to say karmic balancing, but I think it's more mundane than that much more mundane than that like it's going to lead to real conversations and real understandings of how we feel when it comes to what it is that we need to have our balance how do we meet each other in the middle how do we hold our independence and our strength and manage to merge and submerge into someone else's how do we bring two empires together into one huge empire Now that is a question that I'm not giving you an answer to. This is very subjective. This, this is of your own psychology and of the mind and of the decision making and of the life that you're building for yourself. These are questions that I'm encouraging you to ask yourself in the next two, three days. Or, or at the time that you're seeing this video. Because if you're seeing it whenever you're seeing it, it's relevant. Especially if you resonate. But also karmic. I feel like a lot of truths are going to be exposed at this time. And I, I'm actually not sensing drama. This could be with mellow, easygoing conversations. You'd be imagined how much resolution of karma can be so simple. It doesn't have to be like explosions and hua. Unless you want to. I don't know. Anyway, guys, so thank you for tuning in. I'm looking forward to giving you all the readings for April. I'll see you in the current March readings that are already up. I actually did 24 readings for March. I did the regular tarot scopes for March, general reads, and I also did a special um, Oracle Akashic Records and Room reading for March, and that's all on YouTube, okay? On top of, of course, the extended ones on my Vimeo, that, which I will link below. So there's a lot to catch up on of things that are happening right now. I know it's tempting to know what will be, and we, I will give you that. I just, I am such a big fan of foundations <laughs> and doing things like, you know, I'm Taurus, you know, I'm a Taurus. Okay, guys, I love you very, very much. I'll see you soon. Subscribe.